This is Pastor Brian from Eden Church. Church, but not as you know it. We want you to join in, subscribe, tell somebody about this new platform that we are on. Church, but not as you know it. It's completely different. We're going to have worship, the word, and we're going to just have a wonderful time in the presence of God. You want to join us uh, next time we're online. Stay tuned for what's coming up next. It's going to be amazing. Hello friends and family from all over the world. My name is Aphrodite and this is Eden, church but not as you know it. We're so grateful that you're able to join us for another week of service, for praising God and to hearing more about His Word and what He has to say to us. I'm just going to bring this service under the submission of God, so let me just pray. Our Father God, we just thank you God for this day. We just thank you God for who you are and what you have done. We just pray, God, that each and every week that you continue just to fill us up, God, with your word, with your spirit, with your truth, God. And we just pray that even in this service today that, God, you will speak with us again, Lord. We just pray for each and every person. Continue to protect them, guide them, and be with them, Lord. We just thank you, God, for your grace and your mercies, God, for, they, for your love endureth forever, Lord. We just love you, God. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's go on to my thought for this week. So this week, um, I guess it's just a little bit of an anecdotal sort of story. Um, I've been thinking a lot about time and how precious time is in that sense that there are so many people that um, we often let in our lives that end up taking up time that, you know, they didn't, that they did not deserve in some way. They took energy that they um, were, should not have been allowed to have. And it just made me think about times and the seasons that we have, knowing what is important and what is right in that season and to be able to accomplish it and for it to happen in that season. And in order to do that, we need to be so intentional about our time and how we use it and who we give it to. Um, I'd just like to read from Ecclesiastes 3 um, and it says, from verse 1, it says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. And a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. I think that this would be the season, refraining from embracing. It goes on, but what the, I feel as though the passage that I just read has been saying to me is that there is a specific thing and a specific purpose and a specific idea for each season. And for me, it's so important that I just, we all just become so aware and intentional of the time that we have and how we're using it. Is it a time where we're supposed to, you know, laugh and dance? Great. I hope that we all have those seasons. But is it a time to just, you know, build quietly? What is the season for you? What is the time? What are we doing during this time? So that's something that I just want to leave with you there. Moving on and about timings, we have a baptism. We have praise and worship, we have the word brought by Pastor Tolu, and we also have the communion because it is the first Sunday of the month. So I hope you're prepared and have gotten all your wine and crackers or whatever it may be. Let's get to it. So now we have praise and worship and praise and worship is so important. It's so intrinsic as part of a Christian life, just being able to praise God in spirit and truth, knowing that we're able to have that session of talking to him and that may be through dancing and that may be through singing but whatever it may be just take time and take part in this moment praise and worship will be led by your tinde with eden praise the words will be coming up at the bottom of the screen so feel free to follow it along this is a time where we sing and we dance and we just you know um, speak with god however we wish so please do join in and um, let's just praise god Hello and welcome to today's service once again. It is to God we give all the glory because He has done so many wonderful things for us. I'm going to say yes and we'll bless His name because we give you all the glory. You've done an amazing thing. It is to you. It is to you I give the glory. It is to you I give the praise. For you have done so much for me 
and I will bless your holy name. It is to you, Holy Father, no one like you. And I will bless your name, bless your name, and I will bless your name forevermore. Why not sing with me? It is to you. It is to you. I give the glory. It is to you. It is to you. I give the praise. For you have done. For you to lead us through, hallelujah, you are worthy of all the
God is indeed the pillar of our lives. Thank you so much to the praise and worship team for ushering in the Holy Spirit and getting us prepared for what is right now communion. So I just encourage you to get what you need to, Ribena, crackers, bread, whatever it may be, and um, join us here and let's have communion together. Greetings in the name of the Lord. As we uh, get ready for communion, I just wonder if we can pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, for your amazing grace. Thank you for the gift of Jesus on Calvary. Thank you for salvation, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you for a time like this that we are able to come together to, to remember the one who gave. Even as we come around the table, Lord, Father, let your presence be felt, Lord, and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, even as we get ready for communion, I wonder if we can just go to um, a passage of the Bible, Gospel according to John. Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I'm going to be reading from New King James Version. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. As the father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. The story of uh, Holy Communion is key to the message of Christianity. Central to the message of Christianity it is our belief that Jesus Christ came, he died on Calvary, his body was broken and his blood was shed for the remission of the sins of mankind. This story was told by the prophets. In particular, Isaiah 53 tells us concerning the death and the manner of the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary. This came to pass when Jesus went to Calvary for us. Now, sometimes we don't understand the price that Jesus Christ paid on Calvary. We will never be able to tell how much pain, how much suffering he went through because of you and I, so that you and I can become co heirs of the kingdom of, of the living God. Today, even as we come around the table of the Lord, the Lord is reminding us concerning his death on Calvary because of you, and because of me, so that we can become reconciled to the Father. And because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we have become co heirs of the kingdom. The Father has, has called us to be, to be like him through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. We could be like Jesus. We could be exactly the, lay, the way the Lord wanted us to be from the beginning of time in close union with him. Now the Bible tells us that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread 
And having taken the bread, he prayed. He gave it to his disciples and said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. Can, we, can I encourage you wherever you are to just take the bread in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the body that was broken for us. Let your name be glorified, Lord. Shall we eat? In the same manner, the Bible tells us, I mean, he took the cup and having prayed, he gave it to his disciples. This is the blood of the new covenant. As long as you take this, you take it in remembrance of me. Shall we drink together? So now we have our baptism. I know what you're thinking, baptism in this sort of situation right now, but yes, it is a socially distanced baptism. And Pastor Brian actually led this young man, Tyrese, um, to God through actually, what was it? He was watching one of our services and it moved him. Um, Pastor Brian led him to God over the phone and that is really, really, really remarkable. So I know what you're thinking, how does this work? According you know, to COVID regulations, it was done a little bit differently, but still, you know, he's entered the kingdom of um, God and he's saved. So that's, that's brilliant. What was done in this instance was that his auntie baptized him and Pastor Brian oversaw the whole, the whole thing and did the service. So let's watch. Welcome to this socially distancing <laughs> baptism. <laughs> First of its kind. Um, so, um, Tyrese is going to be baptized in a moment. We're going to we're going to dunk him in, in a little while. Um, but just for us, so that we understand what baptism is, uh, baptism is when you bury the old man. man. Right? Yeah. So that old man um, that was part of Tyrese, we're going to bury him in a new Tyrese. Is gonna is gonna come up. So the the idea of baptizing really is being buried with Christ and rising again with Him in in newness of life. However, as I said before, which you know very very well, Tyrese, is that baptizing bat, baptism cannot save you. And the Bible says that you're only saved when you confess with your mouth, uh, like we did and you've done before. You confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says that that's when you are saved. Uh, the purpose of baptism then is really we follow in uh, Jesus' uh, principles. So Jesus got baptized. So baptism is important for someone who is a Christian. And, and that is, I would say, the first step in your Christian um, walk with Christ um, so you've made that confession and you believe in your heart that's what you've told us and this is the reason why you're going through uh, baptism and so our prayer is that you know as you continue your life your life will be changing you will you will grow in Christ you know and, and I said before when I was praying for you earlier that I believe God has got great things for you and uh, you may not understand fully what is happening and you might be thinking to yourself oh uh, it's cool so I just I just want to get baptized because it's cool or because I've seen somebody else being baptized um, maybe you know maybe that's what you're thinking but you'll say no and um, you believe that uh, there is purpose in, in you getting baptized. And I believe there is as well. And um, I believe, this is what I believe, that as you do it, I believe uh, the power of God is going to come upon you. 
and you're going to be changed you won't be able to even understand the change that is going to come upon you the things that you had desired to do before you're not going to want to do them anymore because a new Tyrese is going to emerge I believe God has got yeah I believe God has got great things for you you know there is an evangelist heart that is upon you and you're going to lead many people to Christ and that's what that's what the devil doesn't really like you know because of the purpose that God has for you and you may think oh you know, that's not significant but God is is building you up and he's preparing you for what he has ahead of you and the devil is trying to get you you know to to get into you and to 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 have the 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 the, the presence of himself you know rather than the presence of God in you so but God has already saved you so that's the great thing so even if you were to die now he's got a place for you in heaven and he's forgiven you of your sins you've confessed and you are a work in progress none of us are perfect the Bible says from glory to glory he's, he's changing us you know from glory to glory so even I as a pastor I'm a work in progress you know I'm not perfect but I'm getting there I'm working towards perfection I actually will not be perfect until I reach heaven all right so God is doing the work in your life and as you serve him he's gonna do great things through you amen right so um, I'd like now to ask you before we put you in the water is to ask you to give a testimony remember we spoke about a testimony before and it's just ready to tell us why you're doing this yeah. Ooh, but in my earlier life yeah when I start for my when I, for my year six when I was six years old I came in a care home and my whole life changed like I started changing because I knew different people that was doing all kind of things where you don't do in this age and they showed me how to do it like starting smoking with 12 11 they told me this is cool and all of this and I thought yeah go on and then when I got older like 14 15 and I was still in the care home I started going like with gang members from Germany and doing kind of things where I never want to do but yeah no but I don't nobody should have to do this in this age I had to work for food when I was a kid like six seven eight I had to work for my food at the care home it was horrible life yeah now I'm, I want to change I want to change I want to get out of all of this this good gang mentality and all of this yeah it's nonsense it don't make sense one time I had corona on the beginning when this corona started and I actually got healed after a few hours and I, I, Jesus showed me, God showed me a dream one time I, I didn't know what happened but something happened on the day before when I went to sleep and God showed me like Jesus tried to talk to me in my dream but the devils keep coming in showing darkness and trying to hold him away from me mm. yeah can I ask you to pray for him? I just want to thank you so much for Tyrese that he has decided to give his life to you today, Father God. That he wants to put behind him a life of sin, Father God, a life that's far from you. And I just pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will come and dwell with him, Father. That you will be the Father God to show him the way that you have for him, the plan that you have for him. That you will give him all that you have for him, Lord. And that the devil will not have his way in his life anymore. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And I just thank you, Lord, that you brought him to England for this purpose, that he be baptized, Lord. I just pray that you anoint him and give him a life of blessings. Amen. Uh, Lord, thank you for wrapping blessing abundantly. Pray your Holy Spirit will convict him. Pray you draw him close to you. I thank you, Lord, for the plan that you have for his life and um, just abundantly blessing and use him to glorify your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 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 so, um, come up, come over this way. Come over this way a bit. You soon get your seat. That's it. Kneel down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you uh, clasp your hands like this up to his chest. Yeah. And um, Chantel, you hold his hold his hands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and one hand on his back. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is, you know, in the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And she brings you down and then brings you back up. All right? Don't hold him down. <laughs> Tyrese, I believe that God has great things for you. And you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. And today, you're going through the waters of baptism. We are so excited for you, for what God has for you. Now, your auntie is going to dunk you. <laughs> and I'm just going to declare the word of God over you. So, Tyrese, on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was another soul for the kingdom of God and it is so remarkable and so encouraging that we're able to witness that, that even through these times God is still ruling and reigning and he's still showing his light and he's still spreading forth his love even in these dark times. And it brings us nicely into the word which is brought by Pastor Tolu, is shine your light, O Lord. And that is just so poignant as we remember and, we, and as we know that God is still shining his light even in these dark times. Let's see what he has to say. Hello and welcome once again to Eden Church, to our online service as we gather around and share the word of God. My prayer as we go through this message is that God's word will take root in your heart, that it will fall on fertile soil in the name of Jesus, and that we as God's people will of course be challenged and be comforted by the word of God in Jesus' name. This day, I wanna talk about lights, specifically, the light of God. There are things that we know of as Christians, as believers, that, uh, that are in the natural that also apply in the spiritual. And one of the things we're going to look at today is, you know, what light means, what it does, and why, of course, we want the light of God to shine into our lives and into our hearts. We're familiar, I'm sure, with um, verses such as Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Or John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Or some versions would say the darkness did not overcome it. I want to look at light, what it means, and how that applies to our lives. Before doing that, though, let's turn to the Word of God. Let's read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Second Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. I read, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose hearts, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. 
For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. Let me read verse 6 again. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray as the ministry of the word comes forth right now that you will open our hearts to receive from you, O God. You will challenge us, O God. You would touch us. By your spirit, O God, convict us. And I pray, God, that you will just speak to every heart who hears this message. Let your name be glorified. Let your word take root in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I said just then that we're familiar with that verse. Genesis chapter, in Genesis chapter 1. God said, let there be light. And there was light. This was the first command that we read of in the Bible, the first command that God gave. We know the accounts in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and God spoke for, let there be light, and there was light. Verse 2 of that chapter tells us that there was darkness on the face of the deep. God countered that by issuing that command, proclaiming that command, let there be light. And in doing so, in commanding that there be light, Darkness, of course, then had to flee. Darkness had to go. So the countenance, if you like, to darkness was God shining forth his light, commanding his lights to come out. Let there be, and there was. And just in the verse that we've read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, God commanded light to shine out of darkness. The writer of, to the Corinthians, Paul, picks up on this uh, command that God gave, let there be light, and say, just as God commanded, let there be light, He shone His light into our hearts. You see, in the spiritual realm, light represents life. Remember the verse that we just read in, again, that I mentioned in John chapter 1, verse 4. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Light represents life. Darkness, on the other hand, represents evil. It represents what happens, what the enemy does. Our adversary, the devil, he is the prince of darkness. He's the one who goes around in darkness. Why? Because he's trying to hide his activities, his actions, so that we can't see what he's doing, so that we stumble and we fall. So light is life. Darkness is death. So by God shining his light into our lives, by God commanding let there be light, by God shining his light into our lives, what God is doing is that he has given us life. We'll look at that a little bit later on. But in the passage that we've read, in fact, if you go to the preceding chapter, chapter 3, and you read it through, you realise that there Paul was comparing two ministries. There was the ministry of death or condemnation written and engraved on stones and the ministry of the spirits. And what Paul tells us is that both ministries were glorious. Both ministries had, had glory in them. But the ministry of life, the ministry of the spirits was more glorious than the ministry of death. And he tells us what these two ministries were like. And there he continues now in chapter 4, telling us what the ministry of the spirits is like. And he mentions a few things there in chapter 4, just as we've read. So for example, he says, because we have this ministry, this ministry of the spirits, this ministry of righteousness, we do not lose hearts. He says, therefore, we have renounced the hidden things, the things of evil, and we're now walking in the truth. And he tells us, he warns us that this gospel is hidden to those whose eyes are blinded because the, the devil, the enemy has blinded their eyes. Of course, those who are blind are walking in darkness because they can't see where they're going and that's why they could easily stumble, they could easily fall. You see, the gospel is not hidden to us 
The grace of God, the mercy of God, the knowledge of God is not hidden to us, to we who believe, because the light of God has shone into our hearts, into our lives. That is why it's not hidden. That is why God has revealed these things to us by His spirits. And those, therefore, who, who, who walk in darkness, those, therefore, who are blind, just as the passage tells us, that light has not shone into their hearts. And, that is what, and what the devil does is that he tries to blind them so, so that they do not see the lights. Of course, brethren, this tells us that we are in spiritual warfare. There is war going on. And I tell you this, if you're a believer, if you didn't know that, well, that's, that's news for you. If you knew it already, yes, by God's grace, that is a reminder for you to know that, look, there is a battle going on. The devil, does, the devil doesn't want you to go to heaven. He wants us to go to hell. But in Jesus' name, we have the victory. So praise God that we are not blind. Praise God that the light of the gospel of Christ has shone into our lives. And Paul tells us, therefore, in this passage, chapter 4, that the ministry of glory shines. The ministry of glory, therefore, is bright. The ministry of glory is, therefore, wonderful. And he sums up the passage that we've read by saying, just as God commanded, let there be light, that light shine out of darkness, so too God has shone into our hearts. That's a wonderful revelation that we're given there. Just as God, com just think about that. Just as God commanded, let there be light and darkness disappeared and darkness went. So to God has shone into our hearts and given us a revelation of, of, of who he is. Therefore, from the passage that we have read, we could see a few things. I want to bring out a few things that we could talk about lights. And then as God would lead me, I want to really round that up and see how see how we could therefore apply that into our lives. The first thing that we could say about light is this, and we've already even already mentioned this, is that light represents life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. This is the life that God gives to all who call upon him, to all who accept him. And John chapter 1 makes it clear to us that the light is Jesus Christ himself. And see what he says in John chapter 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. This is Jesus speaking. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Hallelujah. Light represents life, the life that is in Jesus Christ. As we walk in the light, we are walking in the life that Jesus Christ has given us, that God has purchased for us on the cross of Calvary. Light is a representation of life. Light also dispels darkness. John chapter 1 verse 5 says this, And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. The darkness did not overcome it. The word comprehend used in that verse is quite an interesting one. And it could actually mean, it, mean a number of things. It could mean overcome or seize or take possession of. So have a look at it this way. The light shines to the darkness and the darkness could not overcome it. The light shines to the darkness and the darkness could not take possession of it. What this tells us is that when the light shines, the light always overcomes, always triumphs over darkness. In darkness, you don't see where you're going. In darkness, you stumble. In darkness, there could be hidden things that you're not aware of. In darkness, the deeds of the enemy are hidden. But when the light comes, it dispels the darkness so that all the error or the deceit, all the hidden things that the devil is trying to place in our way are revealed. And we're aware of his imaginations. We're aware of his intentions. As I mentioned, people of God, this speaks to us of spiritual warfare. Light is it's like waging that war against darkness. But you know what? The light will always win. In the light, the victory is always guaranteed. And therefore, as God shines his lights and darkness is dispelled, we get a deeper, a more profound revelation and knowledge of God. Why? Because the, the, 
the deeds of the enemy therefore are exposed and we know what God wants us to do. Another property of the light is this. We see this in, 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 the, in, in the passage read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Light manifests the truth. Let me read verse 2 again of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It says this, But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. God wants we, his people, us, his people, to be able to discern the truth from error. You see, people, there is so much error going on in the world today. So many heresies, so much falsehood. Where in this season of the, call it what you will, the pandemic, lockdown, coronavirus, call it whatever you want to. And I'm sure, like me, you've perhaps had so many messages, so many conspiracy theories about the origin of the coronavirus, is it God's judgment, is it spiritual warfare, is, is it this, is it that, all sorts of things. And I'm not here to talk about that, I'm not here to discuss all the, all the, all, all the stuff that people have been sending via all sorts of social media um, accounts. But I want to say this, one thing it makes clear to us is that there is so much falsehood, so many heresies, so many false teachings going on. And we need the light of God to shine into our lives that we will know the truth from error. We will know what is right from what is wrong. We will know when someone is telling us a lie, when someone, something is deceptive and when it's true. And God does that by shining his light. Therefore, we renounce the hidden things. And see what it says there. We have renounced the hidden things of shame. They're shameful, we see, because when people want to do evil, they do it in darkness. They do it in darkness. Why? Because no one can see. They do it in darkness because they think it's hidden. They can't come into the light because the light exposes everything. But by walking in the light, people see us for who we are. There's no falsehood, there's no hypocrisy, there's no deceit. The truth therefore comes out and the truth prevails. However much the darkness tries, when the light comes, the truth prevails. And that is why we need God's light to shine, that we will know the truth and that when people handle the word of God, even as it says in this verse, when they, people try and handle the word of God deceitfully, with impure motives, trying to mislead, trying to lead astray, when people handle the word of God deceitfully, we will know and we'll be able to take the necessary and the appropriate action. Where, as, as light shows the truth, as light reveals the truth, what it also does is this. It exposes the deeds of the enemy. Paul says in this passage that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are perishing, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who don't believe, lest the light of the gospel of Christ should shine on them. You see, the devil doesn't want people to come to Christ. And therefore what he tries to do, what he does, is that he keeps people in darkness. He keeps people in bondage. He blinds their eyes. And our prayer, therefore, as God's people, is that God will shine his light into those whose eyes are blind, that they, therefore, will, will, will receive a revelation from God. As I said earlier on, people, this is spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare. We are fighting, we are waging war against the enemy. And we're doing it by exposing him for who he is. We're doing it by exposing him for his very intention. We're doing it, therefore, by not walking in ignorance. There's no time for us as God's people to be ignorant. Not ignorance of the devices of the enemy. God has given us what we need to wage war against him, against his imaginations, against what he does, and prevail. Those who are set free, those who have broken the chains of the enemy, those who have had their eyes opened and they're liberated. Should not want to go back to the darkness. Should not want to go back to errors or to falsehood. No, but to keep and remain in the light 
and make progress in God as God would lead and God would guide us. We are free people of God. We are free indeed. And as his word tells us, let's stand fast, stand firm in the liberty which is Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free by shining his light into our hearts, by giving us a revelation of himself. Let us stand in that liberty and let us ensure that the enemy doesn't hold us captive, doesn't blind us to the truth, doesn't blind us to what God is saying. Rather, our eyes are open, our hearts are open, and we know what God is saying to us, and we move and we react accordingly. Now, in the passage, Paul says this, those whose eyes are blind, the God of this world has blinded their eyes, lest, if you like, the good news of the glory of Christ should be revealed to them. There's something that the enemy, those in darkness, there's something that the enemy is keeping from them. There's something that the enemy is preventing them from knowing. There's something, therefore, that they need to come out of. And therefore, know by God. People, we have a job, we have a mission to pray for those who are in darkness that they receive a revelation from God. I believe we have a job, we have a mission to pray that those in darkness, that the light of Christ will shine into their lives and into their experience. How we need the light of God to shine to our lives. Another point about the light is this, and this is the point that I love. The light reveals Jesus Christ. Verse 6 says, It is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, um, as I said earlier on, read, one, read the uh, uh, previous chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. When Moses went up to the mountain, God would reveal himself to Moses. Moses' face shone. And therefore, when he was coming down the mountain, he would have a veil over his face so that the children of Israel would not see the end of what was fading. The face of Moses shone with the glory of God. And this verse now tells us that God has shone his light in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God in the face of Christ Jesus. You know what that tells us? That is something remarkable and something amazing. It says that as God shines his light into our lives, he reveals Jesus Christ. He reveals his son to us. It means that he reveals himself to us as he shines his light. The shining of light is a place of revelation. Amen? It is a place of revelation we come to where God as our Father wants to make himself known to us. So he calls us, come my child, come my son, come my daughter, come into the light. And we receive that amazing, that wonderful revelation of God. It says the face of Christ, he's given us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Listen, God wants to be known in your life, amen? God wants to reveal himself in your life. God wants you to know him, to have fellowship with him, to move closer and closer to him. You see, the word glory could mean splendor, it could mean brightness or majesty. Isaiah said, and we know that, that, that verse in Isaiah chapter 6, in, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple. People, God wants to reveal himself to you and he has shone his light into your life that you may have a revelation of him. See Jesus, see the Lord in his glory, in his majesty, in his greatness. And when we do that, when God shines his light into our lives, What's our response? Our response is just to worship. Our response is to serve him. Our response is to, is to follow him. Our response is to have fellowship with him. Our response is to listen to what he is saying. Our response is to do his command, to do his will. As he shines his lights into our lives. What an amazing revelation that is. What an amazing revelation that is, people. 
this ministry, this ministry of the Spirit, this ministry of righteousness, this ministry that shines the light into our lives, this ministry that has excellent, wonderful glory, glory that does not fade away, unlike the ministry of death. That is what God is shining into our lives. Oh, let our prayer be, Lord, shine your light into our lives. Let our prayer be, Lord, as you said, right there at the beginning, let there be lights. Yes, Lord, shine that light into my life. Shine that light into my experience. Shine that light into my very being that I will have a revelation of you, O oh God. That I will know you, that I will serve you, that I will follow you. In conclusion, therefore, you know, we cannot appreciate or understand how great God is unless he reveals himself to us. It is God by his Spirit who reveals himself to us. When Simon Peter said, when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And then Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. We need a revelation from God, a revelation that only God can give. That is why we need to ask God to shine his light into our lives. God, please, for everyone listen to this message, O oh God, my prayer right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, is that you shine your light into every person, into every life. The light that gives life, the light that reveals Jesus Christ. The light that allows us to walk in truth, not in error. The light that reveals the hidden things of darkness. The light that causes us to worship, to follow you. Lord, reveal, shine your light into our lives, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the scales go. Let the blindness go in the name of Jesus. Let blind eyes be opened, Lord, as you shine your light in the mighty name of Jesus. And let we, your people, walk in that victory that you have purchased for us in the name of Jesus receive that word into your life but as God said let there be light as God has shone into your life he'll reveal himself to you and perhaps if you're listening to me, to me right now and you don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior why don't you make today that day when you ask God to come into your life and shine his light into you if you want to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ, why don't you contact us with the details that will be on the screen towards the end of the service. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to counsel you. We'd love to help you. And I pray God will bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tolly, for that word. Let us all be lights in this world. Let God just fill us with his light and let us emanate it. Let us illuminate other people with our own light too. So now we're gonna move on to tithes and offering. Once again, we're so grateful that you're able to be to, to give because giving is such a beautiful thing and giving to support the church and giving um, whatever it may be. And that doesn't just have to be, you know, tithing. It can also be our just our time and our prayers too. But ultimately, we just thank you so much that you're able to give and you'll be truly blessed for what you do. So the information for the tithes and offering will be shown on the screen now. And you'll also get information for how to contact us. Remember that we're always available and ready to hear from you, whatever it may be. Um, we just want to hear from you and know that, you know, you're well and you're doing well. And if there are any prayer requests, if there is anything at all, there is a number there and as well as um, our email address. And don't forget, you can get more information about um, Eden Church at edencc.co.uk. So... And we also have social media. So we have Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And as we just said before, we really just want to hear from you. We want to communicate. We want to know what's going on and what are your thoughts. And last but not least, we have the subscribe button, the big red button, which we really, really want you to click so that you know what's going on each and every week and you're able to join us for more services. Let me just round this up in prayer. Father God, we just thank you, God, for this day. We just thank you, God, for everything that you've accomplished in it, Lord. We just thank you, God, for the word, and we pray that, God, we apply it in our lives. 
We pray that each and every person that has joined, God, you just go ahead of them, order their steps, and help them in everything that they do, Lord. We just thank you, God, for another week, God, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That's another week. Remember, same time, same place next week. We hope to see you all there. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bet you thought I had gone. We have Pastor Ajiman, who's going to be speaking as our guest speaker next week. So please join us for then. Okay, bye. <laughs>